Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel, everybody. Lanny, Bert, you know us, everybody. The Dividend Diplomats. We are about to talk to you about some of our recent stock purchases where Lanny and I invested nearly $2,500 in undervalued dividend growth stocks one of the last few weeks. Wow, guys. Now, before we dive into the purchase, you know the drill by now. Smash that subscribe button. Give Bert and I a nice thumbs up and say hello to the bad guy. Yeah. Is the Ramon. First video, obviously, we're recording here uh, since the, the passing of Razor, one of Lanny's favorite wrestler. I think he might be outside of Hulk Hogan. He was your number two, right? Or it might have been 1A, 1B, all the same love. Hey, yo. Yo. Hey. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. It's it's sad. It's unfortunate. One of the most charismatic, one of the more fun wrestlers to watch, too, when you go back and watch his clips. Always made a smile when you saw a Razor clip pop up. So RIP Razor. Always be loved here on this YouTube channel. That is for sure. Guys, give us a thumbs up for Razor. But yeah, bro, we were pretty busy the week of March 7. This was our last week of purchases. So we haven't touched on this week of March 14th, but we are hitting you guys with March 7th, giving you full transparency as the stock market was down for the week, um, you know, last week. And Bert, I know you and your wife were busy. My wife and I, we were both busy trying to buy dividend stocks to add to our passive income totals. Right. That's right. So what was going on during this week? Obviously, there's the Russia-Ukraine conflict. There is inflation. There's talk about hiked interest rates. But what was unique about this week that hasn't held true this week is this was the week where the price of oil was spiking. You were seeing record highs for that price per barrel, causing significant gains in the oil companies. You saw Warren Buffett announce positions in Occidental Petroleum. He was investing in oil. That was the major headline. Obviously, the price has come down since then. Things are calming off a little bit in the oil market. But just keep that in mind as we continue to talk about our purchases and some of the investments and moves that we made during the week. Exactly, guys. So we're going to start this off. We're going to hit you with some fast hitters here just so that we're not boring you guys with buying dividend stocks, but dividend stocks to us well, is exciting. But I know. Are you sure we a, don't want to bore them, Lanny? Because you're right. It's boring, but it's exciting. I would bore anyone all day talking about our stock purchases. Guys, men lie, women lie, but numbers don't. That's what dividend stocks do for your portfolios they produce numbers baby yeah so let's start this off i think obviously in the spirit of the time in our discussions the one thing what lane i can just quickly rifle through some of our regular weekly stock purchases that we have my wife and i are both avid purchasers of johnson and johnson we had one share of johnson and johnson that first trading day of the week when the stock market opened I don't know if you've been watching, but the stock price for Johnson & Johnson continues to climb. Several weeks ago, we were buying Johnson & Johnson in the low 160s. Those days are gone. On March 7th, we each added one share of Johnson & Johnson at 168.64 and 168.83 for my wife. Still adding $4.24 each or $8.48 at a yield of 2.5%. But as you're going to see, Johnson Johnson stock price continues to slowly climb back up. It's now, I believe, in the 170s as we're recording it. So, hey, that's the beauty of this strategy. You buy one share, you dollar cost average one times are good, one times are bad for Johnson & Johnson. And overall, I'm still in that gain position because we added a lot of shares and it was lower. Nice job, Chico. Yeah. So to go into my weekly, oh, how much money did you put out there and how many dividends, how much in dividend income did you add, Bert? All right, so for the Johnson Johnson, it was $337.47 and in total is eight forty eight dollars at that yield of 2.5. Talk about yours, Lane. Talk about that Monday purchase. Guys, we do our weekly Vanguard high dividend yield, B-Y-M. Yes, I don't buy S-C-H-D. That one is good though as well. Um, but I buy VYM. My wife and I both, we buy two shares each and every Monday. I grab two shares at 110.16 for a total of 220.32. But my wife grabbed two shares at 109.68. There it is. Yet again, I don't get it. It's almost like they favor hers versus mine. Can you blame them? I can't. I agree. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, you know, get any arguments with her. Um, did buy one more share though the next day on a Tuesday for my own portfolio at 108.65, trying to average my position down a little bit recently at least. 
total we spent out there was $548, grabbing five shares and adding over $15 in forward income at an average yield of about 2.83%. But you don't just stop at VYM for your weekly purchases on Monday now, do you, Lanny? You got that right, Bertie. You always get me on this one. So guys, I don't stop buying at VYM consistently each week. I do buy shares of the dividend, another dividend growth stock, a dividend read. We're talking store capital. Warren Buffett, we're talking to you, brother. STOR is the ticker symbol. I bought two more shares at $29.93, adding $59.86 in total capital being deployed. $3.08 added to my passive income total at a yield of over 5% at 5.15%, Bert. Wow. I can't believe their yield. Their yield's hanging well above 5% right now. Just showing well, you, what yeah. was it, like a month ago you were buying them and their yield was 4.5%? It's true. It's true. Now, it could be because of future interest rates increasing, possibly even, you know, it happened this week. We'll have to see what the Fed does on March 16th after they're finished with their meetings. Yeah, by the time you're watching this video, we're going to know what happened with interest rates. So keep an eye on that, everybody. All right, Bert. So what yeah. else did you guys do? Yeah, well, so our week was relatively quiet from an investment front. I mentioned earlier, I teased that the price of barrel per oil came up. I've mentioned in the past in previous videos that we do have a heavy oil allocation. And in the future, I am going to look to cut some of those oil stocks. Uh, several weeks ago, I started as Occidental Petroleum rised. I started selling off some of my position there and buying some stocks with that cash. I started doing a strategy with another dog in my portfolio. If you want to talk about one of my worst performing stocks I've had, it was Schlumberger, ticker symbol, SLB. I bought, I can't even remember what year I bought this. It was at a tie. I, I, that's all I know about Schlumberger. I bought it here. Quickly went down here when the price per barrel had its freak out in what, 2016, 2017, and never recovered. They cut their dividend. Their yield was around 1.1%. So, they came back. They climbed up significantly when the price of oil was jumping. They climbed, I think it was, say, 20%, somewhere between 15 and 20%. I sold half my position, $550 in Schlumberger um, from there. So keep that in mind because I used those funds to invest one of, into one of the stocks that I have been watching closely lately. And a stock that has taken a tumble, Unilever, ticker symbol UL. I bought Unilever with the funds twice, once on March 7th and once on March 8th with those funds, adding um, in total 12.517 shares of Unilever at a price of the first one was 44.04, then at 43.81, in total investing $550 here in Unilever, adding a yield estimated at about $25. So the yield on this purchase was 4.5%. I moved the $550 out of Schlumberger, who was yielding 1.17% at the time, earning $6.40, and then invested in Unilever to increase my dividend income from these funds to $25, a net impact of what, $19 right there added? That's what it's all about sometimes is getting out of your, making the hard decision. I know I had to make a few earlier in the year, but if it didn't fit your portfolio anymore, and you can move the cash into better income producing assets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the thing. I should have sold the rest of my Schlumberger position. I waited. Oil fell down. Their price fell down accordingly. So I'm just going to keep waiting by the sidelines. If I get another chance, I'll keep selling my Schlumberger position and then go from there. I also forgot to mention one other thing too, Lanny. My wife added five shares of Unilever too before the madness started at 4361. Wow. investing $218 into that, adding $10 of income at a yield of 4.6%. So in total for the week, Unilever added 17.517 shares and added what $35 to our Unilever position of dividend income. Jeez. So, Massive. I mean, that was really it for me for the week, though. There's a lot of noise, a lot of noise there. So I've talked a lot. Lanny. Why don't you talk to us about the rest of your purchases for the week? All right, guys, we got four dividend stocks. Obviously, there are, most of these were on my watch list, whether it was in February or in March. Putting my money where my mouth, the blog, and the videos are at. Exactly. Reza Ramon. All right, so guys, I bought Scott's Miracle Grow throughout the week. 
starting actually on Monday at $129.70, bought another share at $118, $11 lower, and then grabbed another share at the end of the week at $115 and change, added a total of you know, $7.92, deployed a total capital of almost $365 at a yield of about 2.2 to 2.25% there. Phenomenal. I mean, if you want to talk about stocks that their price has tumbled over the last 52 weeks or a year to date, even the gods is having a major fall from their highs of what? And they were in the low 200s, low to mid 200s. And yeah, I know they're obviously dealing with some cannabis related revenue right now with their product line, but hey, it's Scott's Miracle Grow. You know, again, yield is starting to swell up to 2.3%. That doesn't even uh, factor in their periodic special dividends they have too. That's what makes Scott unique. Get a regular dividend is now yielding 2.25%. That doesn't factor in the what? The massive, well, it could be up to like five, seven, eight percent on that special dividend alone. Let's go, Scott. I'm representing hard right here. And then yep. I wasn't done there though. I also bought, and I when we come out with another video for the March 14th week, you'll see them showcased again. But during the week of March 7th, I also bought. Yeah, sneak peek, hot take. I also Teaser. bought their two shares last week of Starbucks, ticker symbol SBUX. Huge fan of their company. You know, uh, bought them once at 86.64, then again at 85.24. You better believe I grabbed them under 80 this week. Mm -hmm. But last week added, you know, almost $4 in forward income, flying mm -hmm. a total capital of about $172 at a yield of about 2.26 to 2.3%. Love it for Starbucks. Phenomenal. Nothing more to really say there. Excellent choice. And then jumping into the next industrial stock, you've heard me yeah. speak about them. Bert and I, we've made videos about them. Um, bought Cummins, ticker symbol CMI. Bought one share on March 7th as well at $191.40. And I mean, to give people a frame of mind at the recording of this video, they're over $198 now. Um, so I was able to grab about 191.40 at a yield nice. of over 3%, um, adding $5.80 to my forward income on March 7th. Nice. Yeah, that's phenomenal. That's three companies. You said there were four, Lanny, as you continue to rip through these. So, I mean, they, right. the last three have been great ones. Could you do another great company here to end it with that extra fourth? One person? on one with the great one. So. I bought one whopping share of Leggett and Plot, ticker symbol L-E-G, the leg. The uh, whole share leg drop. At $35.51, adding $1.68 um, to my forward income at a yield of 4.73%. Also, again, buying them on March 7th. All right. You made it through your list, Lanny, here. Obviously, some fantastic dividend growth stocks. We're all pretty amped up. We're excited about Let's get the tallies here for the people because that's what they want to see. Let's summarize here. In total, my wife and I added two shares total of Johnson & Johnson and over 17 shares of Unilever combined. In total, our cost basis in these positions grew $1,105.43. And our Please. dividend income from these new purchases were $43.51. That being said, I did use funds that I purchased, so I didn't use 500. I used $550 from a sale from Schlumberger. So I actually only put $555 of new income into my portfolio. And when you back out the income I lost from Schlumberger, we added $37.11 this week. Hey, it's a good net gain right there. Um, so it. you crossed 1100 bucks. So I'm still counting it, Bert. I know yeah. you don't count it. I'm counting it. Well, yeah, no, I'll count it because I moved it from one lower crappy position to a better position that's up there. So I'll take it. Put the money to work in know, a different way. You know, stocks, you know, as long as you're happy with the stocks you have in your portfolio and it fits what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's hear it, Lanny. Let's hear the big total from you. Yep. So from buying Vanguard, Store Capital, Scott's Miracle Grow, Starbucks, Cummins, and Leggett and Plot. I deployed, my wife and I, we put out there $1,371 and we added about $38 in forward income at a yield of a, a lower yield. Cause I had some, a lot of lower yield, higher growth ones in here, but at 2.76%. Awesome. I mean, or you're like terrible. 
you know, even though you have the lower yielding ones, who cares? All of your stocks beat the S&P 500. They beat the, the index that you're going to get there. That crushes your, your high yield savings account rates that you're getting. It absolutely destroys it. You move the cash into better income producing assets and some fantastic dividend growth stocks. Congrats to you and your wife there, Lanny. And Bert, hey, combined, again, I'm counting yours as 1,100. Combined, we were almost at the 2,500 mark at about $2,475, $76 out there in total capital put out into the stock market, adding a whopping 80 plus dollars in forward income. Hey, we weren't messing around this week. So everyone, let us know what stocks have you been adding to your portfolio lately? What do you think of the purchases? Did you sell some of your oil stocks like I did? And move it into different assets. And what other stocks have you been buying? Do have you been taking advantage of Starbucks, Cummins, Legat and Platt, Scott's Miracle Girl, like Lanny has? We want to hear in that comment section below. Guys, we appreciate you stopping by the channel. Let us know if you guys like Baker Mayfield or another Cleveland quarterback. Leave leave us like a little comment there. Um, oh, we're recording no. this here on a Tuesday night, so <laughs> yeah. we'd love to hear your feedback. And we, by the time this is recorded, there might be some more news about what's happening to Baker. But, Lanny, I think there's only one way we've got to end this video. There's one quote you got to throw out there for everybody. Guys, hard work pays off. Dreams come true. Bad times don't last, but bad guys do. That was Bert and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats, over and out.